you, whether you're participating in the audience tonight or joining us on the screen. We're glad that you're here and, and able to take part in the meeting with us. Welcome to all of you on this beautiful, beautiful day, the week before spring break, which I know everyone's really looking forward to. If you would, please stand with me for the pledge. And now in the Kids at Hope Pledge, as an adult and a treasure hunter, I am committed to search for all the talents, skills, and intelligence that exist in all children and youth. I believe all children are capable of success, no exceptions. Thank you, and you may be seated. Before we move into our public hearing, I want to take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Prince to the dais with us tonight. He's sitting in for the superintendent. Welcome. We're glad to have you with us tonight, Dr. Prince. Thank you. I will now open the public hearing for the proposed adoption of new school board policy, Title IX, Sexual Harassment Complaint and Investigation Procedures. Are there any in the audience that wish to address this topic? Seeing none come forward, Dr. Prince will receive your recommendation. I recommend the board adopt the proposed new policy entitled Title IX Sexual Harassment Complaint Investigation Procedures as submitted. Thank you. Board members, we have a recommendation. Do I have a motion? So moved on the proposed adoption of the new school board policy Title IX. Thank you, Dr. Mills, and second by Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Any conversation? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. like sign. Motion carries 5-0. And our public hearing is now closed. We move now to our special orders of business. Dr. Prince? I'd invite our Chief of Communications, Ms. Olivia Martin, to the podium, please. Good evening, Madam Chair, School Board members, Deputy Superintendent, Dr. Prince, at this time I'd like to invite Dr. Kevin G. Perry to the podium, who will read a proclamation for our Music in Our Schools and Arts Education Month, as well as recognize some special students. Madam Chair, School Board members, Deputy Superintendent Prince, Music in Our Schools, Arts in Education Month, 2021, whereas, March has been officially designated by the National Association for Music Education for the observance of music in our schools month. And whereas, music is the sound of my heart is the 2021 theme of the National Association for Music. And whereas, St. Lucie Public Schools also celebrates Arts in Education Month. And whereas, because of arts education is the 2021 theme for arts in education. And Whereas arts education in comprising a rich array of disciplines, including music, dance, theater, and visual arts are core academic subjects. And whereas the study of music and the other arts is an essential part of a complete and balanced education for all students and provides a competitive edge while engaging students in activities which develop creativity, self-expression, problem solving, observation, communication, and critical and evaluative skills. And whereas music education and the other arts help students acquire skills in production and performance, as well as give them an understanding of history and culture. And whereas music and the other arts significantly enhance the morale and quality of the school environment and the events surrounding it are the ideal opportunities for increasing awareness of the benefits of high quality music and arts education programs in our nation's schools. And real areas, music and the other arts programs should be maintained and improved for all students, regardless of their socioeconomic status or their abilities. And whereas arts education has the power to make students want to learn, not just within the arts, but other areas of study. 
Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the school board of St. Lucie County endorses the observance of the month of March as Music in Our Schools, Arts in Education Month in St. Lucie County, Florida, as an opportunity to support the purposes and practices of a complete arts education, encouraging teachers, parents, students, and all citizens to participate. Deputy Superintendent. Madam Chair, I recommend the board approve the Music in Our Schools, Arts and Education Month proclamation as submitted. Board members, we have a recommendation. Do I hear a motion? Thank you, Mr. Ingersoll, and a second? Second it. Thank you, Dr. Mills. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Thank Madam you, Madam Chair, Perry. school board members, Dr. Prince, also at this time every year, we take the opportunity to recognize those students who auditioned with their peers from the 67 counties and have been selected for history as all state students in the state of Florida. From Lincoln Park Academy, 10th grader, Princess Sierra Brown, a member of the All-State Women's Chorus. A junior from Fort Pierce Westwood High School, Malachi Araya, 2021 All-State Honor Band. A senior, Philip Adams, from Fort Pierce Westwood Academy, a member of the All-State High School <coughs> Choir. And senior, Skylar Mobley, Fort Pierce Westwood Academy, 2021 All-State High School Concert Choir. These students will forever be known as All-State Musicians. Dr. Perry, I know we all look forward to the day when those students can be here with us so that we can properly congratulate them, but please convey our deep, deep congratulations to all of them. Thank you. Our next, next special order of business is to provide recognition and sincere appreciation and gratitude to the Fort Pierce Sunrise Kiwanis Club for their ongoing and generous support of our St. Lucie County Fair school display winners. Um, each category, uh, the Kiwanis Club recognize an elementary school, a middle and or K-8 school, and a high school. So here are the winners for the out of the box competition. These schools will receive $250, FK Suite, Forest Grove, and St. Lucie West Centennial. The third place winners of $250 were Lawnwood, Southern Oaks, and Fort Pierce Westwood. The second place winners were Windmill Point, St. Lucie West K-8, and Lincoln Park Academy. And those schools each will receive $500. And the first place winners of $1,000 is Weatherby Elementary, Palm Point K-8, and Port St. Lucie High School. And we want to say thank you to the Fort Pierce Sunrise Kiwanis Club for their support and a much appreciation to the schools because all of the displays were really well done. So congratulations to all of the winners. Next, we will move right into the STAR Awards for the month of March. The first recipients are a, a pair from St. Lucie West K-8. We have Marisol Abrahante, who is an ESC specialist, and Jamie Mazzo, who is the school counselor. They were nominated by Laura George, who is a community agency partner. Marisol and Jamie handled a tough situation with grace and a smile. Their handling of the situation demonstrated much care and compassion and provided an extra layer of calm at a difficult moment, and it was so much appreciated by everyone involved. Congratulations to Marisol and Jamie. Next, we have Edward Cato, who is a bus driver, and he was nominated by, who, by a parent who called in to say that Mr. Cato goes above and beyond making each student feel welcomed and safe as they enter, ride the bus, and then exit. He is careful to ensure that all students are using the hand sanitizer, wearing their masks, and are properly buckled into their seats. He is pleasant and efficient, and all of the parents and students want him to be recognized for his positive attitude. So congratulations to Mr. Cato. Next, we have another bus driver, April Simmons. She was nominated by all of the parents at the bus stop of Heather and La Brea. One morning during a heavy downpour, their normal bus stop area was flooded. 
Parents were not able to access the parking lot where they normally go. Therefore, parents had to line up their cars on the side of the road. Ms. Simmons took the initiative to stop right next to each car so that every child could go directly from their parents' car to the bus door to avoid getting soaked. All of the parents were so impressed and appreciative of this simple gesture, they wanted everyone to know how special their child's bus driver was. So congratulations to Ms. Simmons. And finally, we have LaGrasante Davis, who is a fifth grade teacher at Sam Gaines Academy. She was nominated by a colleague, Flower Cadoro. Ms. Cadoro was so impressed and continues to be impressed with the thoughtfulness and innovation that her co colleague uses to plan deep, meaningful lessons. Ms. Davis routinely goes above and beyond by providing leadership and creative ideas with her team. And she felt that she really deserved to be recognized. So congratulations to Ms. Davis. And that concludes our STAR Awards for the month of March. Thank you, Ms. Martin. This school district is full of exemplary employees at, at all levels, and it's a, a real joy to be able to recognize them. And again, we look forward to the day when they can come back into the auditorium with us and, and see our faces and be recognized as they fully should. We will move along now to our ESOL report. Mr. Freeland, I see you in the audience tonight. Welcome. It's good to have you with us. Good evening, Madam Chair. It's good to be back. Um, and school board members and Deputy Superintendent Prince, uh, good evening. Um, before I get into my um, main topic here, I just want to uh, just tell a little anecdotal story. Um, after Dr. Perry's proclamation that you guys all approved. For my son, I can tell you that band has made all the difference in the world to him. And I'm talking not just for band, but for the academic subjects, for social emotional growth, for uh, so many other things that he would not have had an opportunity had it not been for music and the arts. So um, I think that's important um, that people realize how important those things are. Um, being a core teacher, I get a lot of attention as a math teacher, you know, how important math is, but so are the arts um, that are out there. So. Um, I want to start by uh, thanking all the board members for participating in our Meet uh, the Board forums that our Tiger Pack put on. Um, uh, it's been so successful that we've invited Mr. Gent and we're looking forward to hopefully speaking with him next month. Um, I also hope that all of you found it as um, uh, fulfilling, um, satisfying, and important as our members did. We had some very good discussion after you guys left. Um, and, and really, just being able to hear from you one-on-one -on -one, um, is really important to our members, and I think it was very, very uh, helpful. Um, I also want to thank each of you for agreeing to meet with me monthly to discuss really whatever's on both of our minds, yours, mine. Um, I think it's helped uh, in the decision-making process on my side, anyway, to hear things in another form besides just here. So I, again, want to thank you for that. I think both of those are uh, greatly appreciated but by both myself and our members. Uh, but I also think they also represent a level of transparency um, and open lines of communication that hopefully we emulate in our schools at the school level with principals and, and um, educators. Um, and because of those open lines of communication, uh, they really laid the groundwork for a lot of the other things that we've been able to accomplish this year um, as we were hit by the pandemic. Uh, we, our collaboration allowed us to open our schools and get them really running in a, in a safe, the safest way that we could. That was part of it. And I will tell you, one of our, my colleagues actually just signed an agreement with the school district that he is in to reopen schools. We were able to do that before schools actually open. Um, we renewed certain elements of the uh, Families First Coronavirus Relief Act. Uh, COVID leave, for example, we were able to renew that because of the work that we've done together in those open lines of communication. Uh, we were able to arrange leave um, and other uh, conditions uh, for over 65 educators to get vaccinated. We've been able to do the same thing for our over 50 educators now to get vaccinated. All those things are important, and that's, that's just what I have on my list here. There's also the day-to-day -day things that are really so critical, but might help a smaller number of people. All of that happens because the union is here, because you listen to us, because we have input, because I have those open lines of communication. Um, and I'm very proud of that, actually. And again, I hear from my colleagues who are not having 
um, I'll just say as much luck as we are, but it's not really luck, it's work. It's work that we've done together to get there. Uh, it's not always easy, and sometimes I get a little testy, and sometimes some of you get a little testy. It's not always easy work, but it is work, and it is work that we get done, and it's important work. And with that in mind, I haven't been reading this, but I do want to read this. I just want to be sure we're clear. Um, I'm sure you're aware, and I think the school board is also under some attack from our legislation, and legislators in Tallahassee, but we're really under attack right now as a union, and we need your help and your support in helping our legislators understand the importance of educators' unions to the smooth working balance in a school district where we collaborate. We know the importance of that balance, and the legislator is attempting to take that away, to insert themselves really between, between us, to take away our educators' really right to join the union, to um, really treat our educators as if they don't understand a piece of paper that they sign. Okay, and that's important, and, and really the accomplishments we have would not have happened or been done quite as well if our members didn't have a voice that you could hear and listen to. So I appreciate that you've done that. Like I said, that doesn't happen in every school district, but we really could use your help in getting our legislators to understand how important unions can be when, when we collaborate, when we do things right. All right, and, and again, we're here to help you too, and I will just say this, it's a little separate topic, but we also believe in the school board locally making decisions. Nobody knows what happens here in St. Lucie County better than you do. Um, you were elected for a reason, and certainly I would rather have you making decisions, even ones where I think we need more discussion than somebody in Tallahassee who's never been here and doesn't know what happens. So we also want to support the school board where we can during this legislative session. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Freeland. It's always a pleasure to have you here, and, and we echo those comments. It is um, a lot going on in the legislative session, and it does require all of us to, to have one another's back. So thank you for thank that. Thank you. Anyone here for CWA? Okay, seeing none, I'd like to invite our two members of the St. Lucie Public School newly named Youth Advisory Council to the podium for a quick update. You'll recall they joined us last month and they have been very, very busy along with their advisor for this past month getting things lined up. And so we're eager to hear from you tonight. Welcome. Good evening, school board members, Chairwoman Halsley, and Deputy Superintendent, Mr. Prince. Uh, we are here on behalf of the St. Lucie Public Schools Youth Advisory Council. We want to thank you all for your being immensely uh, responsive and supportive of our efforts to recognize student voice. The St. Lucie Public Schools Youth Advisory Council will offer the district a platform for student voice on district-wide concerns, thus ensuring that student input is prominently recognized in future discussion. Our focus is not on trivial ideas such as school-specific dress code, but rather pertinent topics such as preparation for further education and ensuring accessibility to mental health resources. The council will begin operations for the 2020 to 2022 2021 school year in late August, with organizational meetings being conducted in late April and early May of this current academic year. Further, the St. Lucie Public Schools Youth Advisory Council will be assisted by Chairperson Holly as the adult sponsor. Since previous board meetings, or since the previous board meeting, we have finalized the St. Lucie Public School Youth Advisory Council bylaws in the upcoming months, we will coordinate with the administration at each public high school within the St. Lucie County School District to establish our council, our council members. Um, we look forward to providing our monthly reports at upcoming school board meetings. On behalf of the students of St. Lucie County, we are anticipating the much awaited spring break in an energized return to finish off the school year. Lastly, we wanted to thank those teachers and staff who have supported us in creation of the St. Lucie uh, Public Schools Youth Advisory Council, and we look forward to the uh, possibilities to come. Thank you. Well, we certainly thank you all, and um, Mr. Smith, I see you in the audience tonight. I know you're proud of these two, as we all are, and. To your advisor, you know, I know you've done so much work with these two and they've just been a delight to work with. 
And so it is my distinct pleasure tonight to recognize you as a full-fledged council of the St. Lucie Public School District and look forward to inviting new members to your council and hearing from you. Um, way to go, guys. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we will move on now to the consent agenda. Dr. Prince, if we could receive. Oh. I recommend the board approve the consent agenda as submitted. Thank Move you. approval. I have a motion from Mr. Kelly, a second. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Ingersoll. All in favor? Aye. No opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Board members, are there any items on the agenda that you wish to remove for separate discussion or vote? <coughs> Hearing none, then we will move right in and Dr. Prince, receive your recommendation on the consent agenda items. I recommend approve as submitted. Thank you. Board members, we have the recommendation. Do I hear a motion? So moved that we approve. The Thank you. Dr. Mills, do I hear a second? Thank you, Mr. Ingersoll. Any conversation? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like sign? Motion carries unanimously, 5-0. Dr. Prince, we move now to our superintendent, deputy superintendent, and staff reports. All right, thank you. Just a couple of uh, uh, superlatives that I wanted to share. Uh, first of all, we have some national merit finalists uh, that uh, you see on your screen. Haley Mangio from Fort Pierce Central High School, Nicholas Demko from Lincoln Park Academy, and Aiden Tambling from Treasure Coast High School. And just a little background, the National Merit Scholarship Program is an academic competition for recognition and scholarships that began in 1955. Approximately 1.5 million high school students enter the program each year, and there are approximately 15,000 semifinalists that are notified that they have advanced to the finalist standing annually. All winners of merit scholarship awards are chosen from the finalist group based on their abilities, skills, and accomplishments without regard to gender, race, ethnic origin, or religious preference. The finalist's academic record, uh, the high school official's written recommendation information about the student's activities and leadership and the finalist's own essay are evaluated. These three seniors representing St. Lucie Public Schools were selected based on their academic achievements as well as their performance on the PSAT. Each of these students, uh, students have weighted GPAs well above 5.0 and will be eligible for many prestigious scholarships which are often offered by colleges to national merit finalists. So congratulations to these three students. We also have a couple of wrestling champions. So we have two state wrestling champs, Iris Nascimento de Costa Feliz from Treasure Coast High School in the 147 pound weight class. Congratulations to her and also Gabrielle Yakis, Fort Pierce Central High School with the 220 pound weight class. Congratulations to those wrestlers for their state championships. I also wanted to mention the Fort Pierce Westwood Academy uh, which participates in the Leader in Me Expo, and that's recognized as the only Leader in Me high school in Florida, which is Westwood, uh, Westwood, West Prep, Fort Pierce, Westwood, West Prep. I always get that. Students and staff participate in the recent Leader in the Me Expo. Franklin Covey's Leader in Me unites students, staff, and families around a common goal to prepare students with college, career, and life readiness skills that are necessary to thrive in today's ever-changing, fast-paced environment. And Brief uh, video of Caitlin Mobley from Fort Pierce West Prep Academy. Hi, my name is Caitlin Mobley. I'm part of the Panthers lead team as well as student council upholding the position as Marine Oceanographic Academy representative for the junior class. The seven habits have empowered me to become a student leader because I've always wanted to have a more positive outlook on life and help others achieve that as well. You always like to see students um, being highlighted, and just like our new Student Advisory Council, we have outstanding students representing St. Lucie County each and every day. The next recognition, or just uh, something I wanted to share, was the uh, Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. Uh, we received two grants worth a cumulative $150,000 for walk-in coolers at Bayshore and St. Lucie West K-8, which are walk-in walk coolers and freezers. I also want to thank Deb Wiest, who applied and secures those grants on behalf of those schools, and they'll be installed this summer. Going back to Westwood, uh, we did have um, uh, 
some ag winners at the fair. So we just a long litany of recognitions, five grand champion titles, two reserve grand champion titles, nine first in class, two second in class, three third in class, and then we had multiple first place finishes, senior two swine record book, uh, senior two steer record book, and second place in senior two swine record book. I'm getting hungry just reading it. So, <clears throat> so we had uh, the Arts Month proclamation from Dr. Perry, but also I want to recognize that this week is National School Social Worker Week, which is March 7th through the 13th. Our school social workers play a vital role in our school community, serving as mental health professionals on our school campuses. School social workers provide direct support for students in need and are integral in linking student and families to services within their schools and community. St. Lucie Public Schools is fortunate to have a team of professional social workers that are lighting the way for students and family. family. Thank you for all of you due to all of our social workers. Just a, reminding, a reminder for the month of April is standardized testing begins and it starts on April 5th. The window opens for grade three reading and uh, also during the month of April we're having writing for all grade levels. My school virtual students will be testing separately from traditional in-person students and parents will be notified by their child's school the specific time and day their child will be testing. Drop-off and pickup times will vary by school and grade level and parents should be on the lookout for information and communication from their schools about the locations and uh, some information with regards to testing. And parents can refer any questions with regards to testing their children to the, the child school administrators. I wanted to also do a, an update on COVID vaccinations. Um, today I received my vaccination. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of this week, we are vaccinating our school employees at the Finn Center. And we've had over, we will have over a thousand employees vaccinated between the ages of 50 to 64. And I just wanted to thank the health department for the ongoing collaboration and partnership uh, with St. Lucie Public Schools and particularly uh, Clint Sperber for working with our schools to try to get that done uh, as expeditiously as possible. Lastly, that is not on the screen or second to last is I wanna wish everybody a safe uh, spring break, both for our employees and our students to make sure they're healthy and they return, hopefully energized after spring break. And lastly, um, the reason I'm sitting here today is our superintendent had a surgical procedure uh, last week and we wanna wish him a speedy recovery and uh, the superintendent, his uh, smiling face is already missed and we, we hope that he gets well soon and gets back into this chair. Uh, for the next meeting. So thank you, that concludes my public remarks. Thank you, Dr. Prince. Let me read into the minutes our action item. There is a motion confirming, approving, and ratifying all of the superintendent's actions taken during the COVID-19 public health emergency for the period covered by his report and authorizing the superintendent's continuation of such actions for so long as the governor's emergency declaration remains in effect. We have a motion for approval, please. So moved. Thank you, Dr. Sorry. Mills. Thank you, Mr. Ingersoll for the second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Some of you may be wondering why we have to read this in at every meeting. But as long as we're operating under emergency declarations from the governor, the superintendent needs the authority to be able to enact things in a timely manner and not have to wait for the next board meeting. And a prime example of that is the making the COVID shots available to our school staff that are age 50 to 64. That would not have happened as timely were we not operating under these emergency orders um, and making that come to fruition so quickly. And like you, Dr. Prince, I got my first vaccination today and I know Dr. Wild did as well. So um, it was a great time in the Finn Center, just visiting with folks we hadn't seen in a good while and making um, promises to see each other again in three weeks because we all received the Pfizer vaccination and we'll, we'll be back um, in that time. So um, just, just to make it real for the public to understand why we have to read that in, but it, it definitely has its advantages. So thank you. Mr. Harrell, do you have a report this evening? Good morning, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harrell. We then will move to our school board member reports, and Ms. Richardson, I'll begin with you this evening. 
Thank you so very much. Good evening, everybody. So um, first off, I had the honor, the privilege of reading to um, two of our schools, um, you know, our African-American history uh, last month. And um, I read to Mrs. Hunt's class. It's a fourth grade class uh, at Francis K. Sweet. And that was a virtual class. And then my other class was um, Mrs. Uli's class, and she's at Longwood, and that was a face-to-face -face class. Two different classes um, or experiences, but my takeaway from, from and we did it um, via Teams, was wow. You know, um, if I didn't appreciate our educators before, I appreciate them now. You know, it's such, uh, 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 I think it's so outside of the box, something that I just never expected to see in my lifetime. And, and just watching them, the kids were well behaved, the teachers had a control of their class, and Mrs. Nixon from um, Lonewood was, you know, she visited the class also. It was such a wonderful experience. So teachers, educators, I say, I can't say enough, about how much I appreciate and I thank you for just being there and what you're doing for our students or for our community. So thank you so very much. The next thing I'd like to, to mention or say is I was sent a link by um, uh, for Treasure, Co Treasure Coast High School. They did a celebration for African American history. Amazing. If you haven't seen it before, it's on the website, you know, go and look at it. I am struggling right now with this mask on, trying to speak without suffocating myself. And I'm telling you, they were dancing, they were um, uh, reading, they were singing with the mask on. I was amazed. And, you know, it was effortless, but it was, uh, it was with excellence, you know. And the, the subject matter, African American history, I mean, it, 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 it made me sit up and I was just so full of, wow, pride, you know? I, I, I was boasting on them. I can't, and I've not stopped boasting, obviously, because I'm still saying the same things. So kudos to Fort Pierce Central High School, you know, for just, you know, stepping up to the plate, going above and beyond, you know, and making this happen because it, it was, I, I, I'm amazed. So if you haven't seen it, it's on the website, you know, check it out. And um, we had um, some discussions on our workshop, you know, uh, about African American uh, history being taught in school. If you haven't heard or, you know, listened to it, I suggest you listen to that discussion <coughs> also apart from the whole workshop, you know, because this is something that, yes, we celebrated it, but it's not going to go away as far as I'm concerned. We are going to keep on keeping on until this is, um, we are intentional about our African American history. We can't open this, turn on the TV without hearing something about racism or whatever the, it is. So this is something that we really need to be intentional about and take note of for our community, for our kids. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. Mr. Kelly? Yes, we had the pleasure of uh, having a uh, Jennifer Harris from the St. Lucie County Health Department speak at our Lions Club today over at Ballantrae, along with uh, Dr. Prince was there and spoke about COVID and uh, uh, all the things that we're doing and, the people, and how many people have got their uh, shots. And I had both of my shots, my wife had two, and we didn't have any side effects other than the fact that I was very tired, but I'm always pretty tired at my age. But anyhow, no, no side effects for us. I don't know about the rest of us, but... Uh, Anyhow, I had read uh, on the internet, and it had to be true because I read it on the internet, that 30,000 people uh, were on the waiting list in St. Lucie County as of about 10 days ago, and that every person that was on that waiting list, and Dr. Prince was there when I said, asked her about it, had it got an appointment within the last 10 days. And that was not just St. Lucie County, though. It was she uh, straightened us out on it. It was Publix, uh, 
Walmart, wherever, wherever they were getting the shots, you know, Getty gas stations, wherever. 30,000 people, though, did get their appointments in the last 10 days to get their shots, whether it was their first or second. And uh, so kudos to the health department and everyone involved in that. And it's great to see our teachers getting their shots. I think Dr. Prince, you said uh, 1,000 teachers have got it. And that's over, over 50 years old. And we didn't get any answer on when we were getting uh, younger younger teachers get shots today. Though. So that's kind of in, uh, in limbo, but we're pushing as much as we can to get everybody to get a shot. Other than that, uh, I spoke with uh, Mr. Gent just this afternoon before the meeting, and he's doing well. He's got his new knee, but he has dropped out of the uh, dance contest on American Idol. He will not be performing for those of you who will check in. Uh, happy, safe, and Enjoy yourself holiday uh, next week, and everybody be safe, be careful. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Dr. Mills? Good evening. Um, I got both of my shots. As of three weeks ago, I got the second shot um, vaccine, and um, I'm really thrilled that uh, we, it has been open to all of our employees, um, 50 up. I'm looking forward to all of the employees being able to get one um, in the near future. Uh, when I say all employees, not just our teachers, but our bus drivers, our, our maintenance, you know, our custodian, um, all of our employees have been able, if they so desire, um, 50 and up to receive the vaccines now. Um, also, uh, for underlying illnesses um, out in the community, uh, there is a form now that can be downloaded uh, that you take to your doctor. And if your doctor says that you have a serious underlying illness, um, ages 16 and up, I believe it is, can now receive uh, the COVID vaccine as well. So we are moving uh, along um, as a country, but um, you know we have to look out for our own and, and uh, so our own is here in St. Lucie County first, and we're doing a fine job. I also thank the health department for the, uh, doing the work that they've done and how they have co-partnered with us to ensure that our, uh, our, our employees receive the vaccine. Uh, uh, now, we have these shields also with each other. So I'm feeling real confident now. Dr. Prince, you know, because I got the shield, I got the shots, you know, I'm confident I'm still doing my social distancing and wearing my mask when I'm not in this protected um, area that I'm in right now. But it feels good to be able to just be able to feel like I can breathe and, um, and with social distancing, you know, be careful about who I'm around, but I can take my mask off at certain times. So I've done that for today. Um, we had the Speakers Bureau uh, this past week. We recorded a couple of speakers out in the community, and we encourage you to uh, go on YouTube because the programs are already on YouTube. I mean, our media department gets it up so quick. Uh, you guys are fantastic in what you're doing in the media department. We did the recording, and by, before I got home, it was already on YouTube. So um, if you would like to see that, um, it's very inspiring, very motivating, very encouraging to those that watch these speakers because they give their life story and uh, they talk about their challenges, they talk about their victories, they talk about their life, real people, real time. Um, they're very open so that they can encourage and help people, others in our community, especially our young people and our students. Uh, but we had Dr. Ram Gopal. He is the medical chief doctor of Midway um, Specialty Care Center. He was one of our guests, and he, the program will run all month long, the month of March with him, sharing his life story, absolutely incredible. And then we had Ms. Jennifer Richardson, our new school board member, who also came on and shared her life story. So you get to know people. You get to know just not just faces, but you get to know people's lives and um, their struggles and their victories and, and the keys that they used within their life to be able to be successful today. 
So um, we encourage you to do that. Also, we have Miss Debbie Hawley that just accepted that she'll be coming on um, uh, next to the 1st of April. So uh, we're just excited to get it back rolling again. And thank you for encouraging me, the media department also, because I got so busy that I, I just got away from it. But um, I got a call, said, Dr. Mills, where are you? We need that speaker's bill up and running again. So we appreciate um, all of us working together to make it happen. Um, and then last but not least, um, in the community, we have started a program, Save Our Children, called Flying Like an Eagle Virtual Tutorial Program. So I'm speaking to you parents out there now. If you have a student that's virtual or traditional, um, that is failing a class, whether it be a D or an F, we are willing to tutor your child by pairing them up with a tutor. So it's one-on-one -on -one tutorial, virtually. And so we encourage you parents that if you do have students that need that extra help, this program is in the community now, free of charge. So you don't even have to pay for it. That's how much we want to help your child achieve um, academically, and not just academically, but what the tutoring program does is help them in the social and emotional area as well as their tutors are mentoring their students as well. So we're really excited about that program. Uh, parent, you need to have a pencil ready right now because I'm going to give you a number. But if you, for some reason, do not catch this number that I'm about to give you, um, I'm sure you'll be able to find me somewhere. And I'm available to explain more about the program to you. We're also looking for volunteers that will tutor the child, that will mentor the child. So volunteers, we ask you to also give us a call, those that are willing to do that. Um, the number is 772. 466-8398, 466-8398. You can call that number after two from Monday, two o'clock, um, from Monday through Friday. So I look forward to um, helping, we continue to help our students within the community. Thank you, Dr. Mills. Mr. Ingersoll? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a couple of meetings that I've been to this week. Um, we closed on the trim notices, so the property appraiser is almost finished, and we'll have the her report out to let you know how much money the school district will be receiving. Not really receiving, but uh, what to start budgeting on. Um, concerned citizens, it was interesting. We went around the room, and the fire department's planning on building two, two new stations within the next five years, which really doesn't excite you. But uh, also, I'm probably wrong, but it was like 2,100 home permits were pulled within this quarter, which is pretty cool. I know it doesn't excite you either. But what, what it means to me is there's a lot coming to this community. When you start building fire stations, when you start building that many permits, it means as a school district, we're going to get more students. And when we went through this and we planned for this, this is, this is incredible. It means jobs and opportunities are coming to our community. Don't look at it as a negative, but look at it as a very positive. There's more things for our kids to do, our students to get involved in. From construction, there's more jobs. It's just cool. It's a great place to live. Um, the fair was great. Uh, me and Miss Holly got to work at the Fay booth. Again, this is our what, fifth year together. And it's always a joy to serve our community, but it's even better just to walk through the booths and see our students' artwork from all different types of schools. We have some in our lobby today. Um, got to go to the swine fair, swine part of the fair, and uh, our students do just such a great job. What's even better is our community supports them too. The buyers and the people that, that, that contribute funds to, to help uh, our community and our children succeed. And they're just not giving them money to give money, they're giving money so that they can go to college. And that's another way for our students to uh, to earn their opportunities to go to this school. And um, that's basically it. I do want to thank uh, David Freeman for, for putting that together, that, that, that forum. Um, we are all individually online, just to make sure everyone knows that. And uh, we do appreciate that. And Dr. Prince, I have not had the opportunity to get my shot. I'm not old enough. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off right there, Mr. Ingersoll. <laughs> But thank you for your report up until that little salt in the wound. <laughs> uh, 
Um, you know, as Mr. Ingersoll mentioned, we were at the fair, and it's really nice to see people beginning to get out and about again. Um, the fair, especially for our FFA kids at Westwood, that's their main money maker to get them through to the next year. Um, so seeing the community participation being there was just a really uplifting. Um, and more and more people are getting out. They're still taking the precautions as they should, and which of course we encourage you to do. But it is nice to see a little bit returning back, um, and especially when it's in support of our kids. So just to close my comments, um, I wish for everyone a very restful spring break. You know, it's been a year now since the world turned upside down at spring break last year, so um, I hesitate to say, but I can't think that anything would be more overwhelming than spring break last year. So I hope you look forward to getting some rest and relaxation, perhaps going out and enjoying the fresh air because the weather is indeed beautiful here in Florida. We do live in paradise. So. Thank you for being with us tonight, and we look forward to seeing you next month. But before I adjourn, Ms. Harrison, do we have any unscheduled speakers? Okay, seeing none come before us then, go and have a fabulous spring break, but don't start until Friday afternoon, okay? Take care. We are adjourned. <laughs>